Right, I've been trying to hack my body to have more energy, focus, be more productive and feel great for years. The answer is yes, you can hack your body. Little tricks to your daily habits can transform your life. In this video, I'll share everything I've tried and learned with you. Last year, I made a video about the perfect morning routine according to Dr. Andrew Huberman. Don't oversleep. Aim for seven hours and a half, no more than eight. So wrong. It turns out people like Roger and LeBron sleep between 10 and 12 hours every day. Insane, right? Now, do we all need that time in bed? Of course not. Sorry, most of us are in high performance athletes. Our friend Elon says he only needs 6 hours per night for a productive day. But he also does ketamine. There is one thing we do know according to science, when to go to bed. After reading this book, I found out that if you are awake between the hours of 10 and 4 a.m., you are messing with your biological clock. And you don't want to do that because you are putting yourself at increased risk of cancer, cardiovascular disease, metabolic dysfunction, mental health, and other psychiatric disorders. Just go to bed before 10 p.m. for God's sake. But how many hours do we need to not feel that morning haze when we wake up? Seven? 8, 9, 10, 12, kind of a mystery that only you can solve. Sorry. The way I found out the right time for me was by letting myself wake up naturally without an alarm. Now I know I need close to 9 hours of bedtime to have proper rest. There are sleep tracking devices that can help finding that sweet spot. It is incredible data that you can use to get to know yourself and improve your sleep. Now if you don't have a tracking device that's okay, just record your night times and mood and go from there. It's 8am, I feel ready for war. <laughs> And if you can't stop using a morning alarm because you work a 9 to 5, just go to bed earlier and you'll wake up before your morning alarm when your body is ready to rock. People are drinking more caffeine than ever. 90% of the world's adults consume some form of caffeine every day. I know I spam all of you with coffee clips all the time. I won't stop doing it. Coffee has great benefits for focus and memory, but too much of the bean juice can do more harm than good. Unless you are a savage like Voltaire and drink more than 50 cups of coffee a day without getting any jitters. Have you ever heard these humans that say, I quit coffee and I feel better than ever? First of all, I wouldn't say I like this group of people. Second, they're right. Remember when you were a kid and you had all this energy to live without coffee. For regular folk like you and I, 4 cups a day is the limit. I personally start feeling really tired and lethargic when I drink more than 3 cups. So, if you have the jitters, anxiety, trouble sleeping, or feel really tired, more tired than usual, you may be drinking too much coffee. Try cutting down. You'll feel so much better, I promise. There are other ways to feel that jolt of energy. The cold shower. It works. Cold exposure causes a significant release of adrenaline that will boost your energy and focus. Light exposure as soon as you wake up, it'll signal your brain it's time to be awake and your body will release serotonin, the feel-good chemical. You'll be in a great mood, that's why they say exercise in the morning, especially outdoors, is great to start the day. Not for me though, I'll talk about that later in the video. So go for a short walk in the morning or eat breakfast by the window, it'll make a hell of a difference. If you want to take it to the next level, try new tropics. My favorite blend so far is Magic Mind. It's a performance drink with nootropics, matcha adaptogens and vitamins for better mood, memory, focus, mental clarity and steady energy. All of these magic ingredients with incredible properties in this little bottle. I've been using Magic Mind for a couple months now and I gotta say, I've been thinking more clearly than ever. I can focus for longer periods of time, I feel more creative and less stressed. And the best of all, no more afternoon crashes. If you want to elevate your mornings, you can use my promo code for a 20% discount at checkout, so you give it a try and see how your days change. I'll leave a link with all the information down in the video description. Thank you Magic Mind for sponsoring this video. Right, workouts. It's no secret that exercise has tremendous benefits for your health. Most people say that working out first thing in the morning leaves them feeling great and with a lot of energy. I'm not one of them. Yeah, you do feel a great mood and anxiety when you have it vanishes. But there is one trade-off, a big one. 
Every single time I've tried to be the 5 a.m. guy, go to the gym first thing in the morning, it feels like 50% of my energy, brain energy, is gone. Doesn't matter what I eat, carbs, high protein meals, if I'm doing keto, intermittent fasting, I just don't feel great. And that's not good for me because I do creative work and I feel like I need all of my energy to do my best work. That's why I prefer to go around 1 p.m. when I'm done with the most important work for the day and sometimes if I'm pretty busy, I go at night. It is what works for me to have more productive days. Funny thing is that I don't feel exhausted when I work out midday or at night. Strange, right? What is your experience? Let me know. What you eat and the time you eat certain types of food will drastically change the way you feel. This is sort of a controversial topic because we all have different diets and ways of eating. Some say intermittent fasting is great for brain energy. When I do IF, I do feel sharper most of the time. That's essentially my body's response to stress, the stress of not eating. That's the reason for the rush of energy the good energy. However, some people say they feel depleted. If you are one of them, it could be because you are dehydrated. A quick fix, drink water with a pinch of sea salt to replenish electrolytes. And you should feel better. If not, maybe you shouldn't be doing intermittent fasting. I don't do it every day because I find it harder to put on muscle when I do, but if your goal is to lose weight fast, the best combo I've found so far is intermittent fasting 16 by 8 on a low carb or keto diet. People tend to hate on carbs, but they're great. They are. If you need a lot of energy fast for a workout or demanding activity, carbs are by far the best food you can have. Because glucose, aka sugar, is our body's main source of energy. I eat carbs, but I leave them for later in the day because that's when I work out. So between 12 and 2 p.m. and I usually have them before and after my workouts. People talk all the time about a magic morning routine and all the things you can do to enhance your days, but you never hear about nighttime, which in my opinion is way more important. For instance, screens, we never stop looking at them, but at night we should because they can keep you up and mess with your sleep. And if you are not sleeping well, it doesn't matter what you do in the morning, you won't feel great. I have a night alarm at 9 p.m., I dim the lights at home, I shower, try to read before bed, I have these blue light blocking glasses that I use when I read from Kindle, and when I do, I make sure the screen is set to the night shift. By 9.45, I'm ready to close my eyes. A relaxation routine before bed increases the chances of having more deep sleep and overall better nights. Here are some tricks you can do to have better sleep. Avoid blue lights at night or use blue light blocking glasses. Take magnesium supplements before bed. Sleep in a cool room. There is evidence that shows that the best sleep temperature to fall asleep and stay asleep for adults is 19 degrees. And make sure your room is dark. All right, that's it for this one. Thank you so much for watching. If I forgot something, let me know in the comments. Biohacking is a pretty interesting topic and I'd like to learn more about it. I'll catch you in the next one. Goodbye.